Welcome to the 129th episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. My name, I mean, uh, so damn paranormal. Uh, my name is Jason Knight, host of the show. And with me, as always, is... As always is... Oh, Oscar Spector. Producer extraordinaire and podcast co-host. Well, Oscar... I think today we should bypass our, our usual two-week catch-up banter because I have two pieces of news that we need to share with the listeners. Is that we okay with you? Know. Do we need that? Do we need that? What? Yeah, I know I said it weird. Do we need to share it? I think so. I think so, too. Yeah, this is pretty important. Uh, especially the first one. Pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. We have a brand new $15 a month patron, a Gozer the Gozerian level patron. Uh, Jamie H. I'm just going to say Jamie H. from Enfield, Connecticut. Welcome to the Supernatural Current Studies podcast and welcome to our Patreon. Uh, for your $15 a month, you were sent some cool podcast swag and you also receive exclusive patreon only content content that will content that will not be shared on this public podcast feed so congratulations for that and thank you for your support we love you <laughs> nothing just a blank stare <laughs> so so it's funny because i had i had a comeback right i was gonna say something like yeah if uh join that thing you know the thing we send you is gonna be something like our piece of a shirt or like piece of my glasses or something like that like piece of us the pe- yes something. like that's the unique thing like the way people buy constellations for their girlfriends or something um you know or or a star i mean not a constellation and but i was like nah i took it back in my head because i didn't think it was that funny i was workshopping it in my head as you were talking and then i could, um, I could tell i could yeah. tell <laughs> and i was like nah i'm letting it go and then it was like silence i'm like yeah this is probably funny if i just don't say anything yeah, it, it was it was definitely off putting. I didn't know where to go with it at that point. Good. Yeah, it's kind of hard, isn't it? <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yeah, thank you. So that's really exciting. Uh, the second bit of news. <sighs> We're dying. <laughs> no, uh, I feel like it a little bit actually. This oh, is, I see. Uh, no, no, no. This is it's, hard. Uh, this is uh, it's more like a coma. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Well, you know, one thing we really prided ourselves here at the pride ourselves with here at the Supernatural Current Studies podcast is that almost five years worth of podcasting, we've never, okay, once we missed a release date, right? Mm-hmm. That every other Monday. And that was only because I had switched uh, hosting companies and something happened with our podcast feed, our RSS feed, and I couldn't get it corrected in time in order to get a show out. That's the only reason why we missed that episode. Even when I had, you know, the worst news of my life thus far, when my, when my dad passed away, we still jumped on the mics, let the listeners know what was happening. And, and that, you know, we'll be back in two weeks with an actual episode. I just couldn't get it together for obvious reasons. Right. Yes. Uh, so even in, in that, you know, lowest point, I was able to jump on the mic with you and get something out to the listeners, let them know what was going on. Right. It's the right thing to do. But <laughs> it's always a but, right? Yeah, and I think people are getting anxiety, just waiting for, anticipating. Well, I feel, I, I feel it. Like I'm, I'm literally getting kind of sweaty right now. I can't believe I'm going to say this, and it's really with a heavy heart that I have to say we are going to put the show on pause for a while and regroup, recollect. Um, I'm very, very hard on myself when it comes to this show. Listeners expect a, a thoroughly researched well-scripted podcast episode each and every time they tune in. And I put mm-hmm. myself under a lot of pressure to do this. Yes, you do. 
I mean, I make fun of you all the time for it, but you, you do. You really do. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, this this episode now, what we're talking about, Slenderman and some side topics that go along with Slenderman. It's Slenderman Esquire, by the way. S- Slenderman. Slenderman. Yeah. Mr. Slenderman. Wait, wait. Yeah, yes. When I was putting this episode together, it was you know, mid last week. Just got off a long day of work. Then helped the kids with their, their homework. I cooked dinner for everybody, cleaned up, played with the kids a little bit. After everyone went to bed, I was pretty exhausted. So I just went into the front room. I, I sat on my recliner, broke out my laptop, and I started doing research and working on this script, right, for this show. All of it, And I was under the gun because I also had a lot of other things going on that I needed to accomplish that week. Um, side quests, sudden, if you will. Yeah, a lot of side quests. Too many fucking side quests. Right. Um, all of a sudden, while I was working on the show, I got this out of, out of nowhere, I got this blinding headache and I started sweating a lot and my heart was pounding. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Am I having a heart attack? I think what I did is I freaked myself out so much about getting the show done and, and keeping the quality up that I had like a, a panic attack. So I just, I, I slammed the laptop shut and I put it away for a couple of days, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then ultimately I was able to finish the show, but that told me something needs to change. Um, too much going on in normal life. This is something we've talked about for almost two months now. You right. Told- this isn't coming out just because of this one incident either. No, it's- this this incident was like the nail in the coffin uh, for a yeah. conversation we've been having. Right. And I, you know, I, you know, serendipitously maybe reminded you before you even told me the story, I think, uh, of, of uh, you researching or trying to research the first time Slenderman. And, um, and then, I mean, you know, before you even said anything, I, I just, I've just i been meaning to ask you for the last couple of shows, if you put more thought into what we discussed like two, three months ago, whatever, about taking a break and the merits of it and the pro con list we're making and a lot of discussions about it. We were and, yeah. but we, and we put it off for a few shows um, from discussing it just to let it sink in if we wanted to really do it. Yeah. So we come to the decision that we are going to do it. We are going to do it. Yes. Yeah. And it's really for the betterment of the show. I never want this show to become a burden on us because mm-hmm. once it becomes a burden quality is going to be sacrificed. Right. Yeah. I right. do not want that to happen. This show has literally become a piece of both of our lives Yes, over the past almost five years. There are specific days off. I will always have because of the show. Right. Yeah. Days off, I mean, days off from other things because I'm doing this show. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of day off. Yeah. It's not a real so, day off. <laughs> so making that final decision to take something that's an integral part of your life and setting it down for a while that, that was a really hard decision to come through, come to. But but that's what we've decided to do. The show isn't going away. We're not calling the end of the Supernatural Current Studies podcast. We're going on a, hi- a hiatus. Yeah. It, it, far from it from that. It's it's like maternity leave at best. And it's not even that long. It's a quarter as long as real maternity leave. And it's um, it's better than that because we're going to come back even better. That's right. Not, it's not even. I'm not even saying. Oh, we're most likely. We are definitely going to be coming back, back and even better because we're not going to be doing nothing. We're not going to be standing on our asses. We're just taking the pressure off regarding the scheduling that we normally do for the show, which we love to do. Obviously, it's just that with the holidays and everything going on, and the fact that many shows do this successfully out there in the world, both televised and podcast forms, um, they can do it. They can do it successfully. Why can't we? And I feel that. Um, during that time, we're not going to be gone either. You're going to be hearing from us, either uh, a version of us from past times or, and not or, and um, hearing um, our input into those past episodes as we go along. We need a break from the heaviness of uh, the workload that we typically do with researching and coming up with ideas. Um, But we're going to take that time to come up with all the new ones. So when we come back, which is when, Jay? February 15th will be our next so about After four this. episodes worth of time. Yeah. That's roughly two months. Yep. February 15th. That'll be mm-hmm. our first uh, heavily right. researched scripted right. episode. And we're going to come back strong. We're going to know exactly what the fuck we're talking about. Not just about that show specifically when we come back, but think of all the ones we're going to be outlining, planning ahead, thinking ahead, you know, and also collaborating with our audiences a little bit. I want to really open the floodgates and some, however you guys want, either trickle or a real flood of information or ideas or things or suggestions you guys want us to cover. Um, we know no bounds on that kind of thing. Yeah. You know yeah. what, we know what kind of show we are. Our fucking title says it all. You know, we know, we know what people like to listen to. If it ain't ghosts, it's serial killers. If it ain't serial killers, it's cults. If it's not, you know, we all have our thing. 
more than the other thing, but we all kind of join in communally on the show and um, we're more than open. We're more than happy to accept and listen to ideas and whatever. I would love to cover things that people really want to hear. Absolutely. Um, Cause sometimes I do feel stumped, but I honestly, I have like, I have a bullet pointed, like, like I don't know, 20 ideas roughly I can think of, of shows we can do yeah. just me alone, you know? So like, it's not like it's not, ne- it's never ending. It is never ending. Thankfully. It's never ending, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, this topic will go on forever for sure. Right. Or right. these topics will go on forever for sure. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I mean, unless there's some sort of real thought police thing happening, um, <laughs> that would be that would be bad. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this hiatus we're going to be working and researching and thinking ahead. And uh, Jay and I will have lots of talks about what the future of SOS is going to look like, and it's going to be the same thing but better, a better, clearer version of what you've been listening to up until this point. 2021 is going to be a better year than 2020 in more ways than just, uh, you know, being the Trump last year thing in more ways than that. <laughs> Whoa. Course. Whoa. Yeah. Well, that's my opinion. I think everyone kind of knows that already. Um, <laughs> sorry. And uh, I wanted to mention that uh, we are coming back strong and we are going to be producing. I mean, we're still going to be technically showing shows every two weeks. We're still going to be putting out content. It's going to be new intros of reheated or rehashed past episodes exactly okay, we'll, curated, curated by our favorites like our, our favorites jay's and i was jay's. just gonna yes i was gonna say we're gonna choose yeah. some of our favorite episodes and we'll mm-hmm. re-intro those episodes so it's a little bit old a little bit of new we're not gonna leave this public podcast feed dead until february 15th you right. will still be in contact you're just not going to be receiving brand new heavily researched scripted episodes right Right, and that's that's the only difference between this hiatus and the reality of 2021 when we come back strong and fully awake and alert and awesome and motivated and all that jazz. That's right. And it's going to be awesome. I, I'm motiv- I'm already psyched about all the great stuff we're going to come out with before we even fucking done the hiatus. I'm already psyched about it. <laughs> Me too, um, man. Me too. You know, I would love to crack open those bullet points and really get into some of those topics. Um, and furthermore, obviously, that goes without saying that Patreon listeners are still receiving their newly fresh episodes uh their monthly uh bonus episodes that we produce for the patreon listeners are still going to be provided so we're not again we're not we're still going to be researching (laughs) even though we're not researching the main feed we're still going to be doing some stuff for our bonus episodes yes patreon that catalog yeah yeah, increasing the patreon catalog patreon is going to run just as it has um so no no worries there, especially to our new patron Jamie H from Enfield, Connecticut. Right, I know it's like, it's like oh my god, Jamie's got like, what the hell? Now they're pulling is that the he plug. Or she, uh, Jamie. I don't know. either, right? I don't know. Not sure. uh, they are probably just like, oh fuck, the worst time to fucking join into the right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. Patreon but no, it's not. Still be it, we're gonna make it worth it, and we're gonna make it worth more of your time next uh, in February fifteenth. Yeah. And so on. Excellent. Okay. Well said. Yeah. So, um, listeners. We're taking a break. We will be back. We're coming back stronger, but you'll still hear from us uh, in some way on this feed. Yeah, speaking of hearing from us, you're going to be hearing from me, especially uh, on our Twitch channel, which is what again? SOS Chica Ghost. So SOS C H I C A G H O S T. And if you're Hispanic, that's Chica Ghost. Um, <laughs> Ole. Ole, right. Um, uh, yeah, so check out our Twitch channel. And obviously, and you uh, please also check out our Twitter because I want to post things in advance on Twitter when I'm going to be recording. Well, so what I'm going to be doing, starting this Wednesday, two days from the from the airing of this very podcast episode, I'm going to be in the afternoon and or at, in the evening, I'm going to be watching some stuff. I'm going to be playing some games. And they are going to be horror or creepy or something central. It's central to our show overall. Sometimes not, but I will start with that. And uh, for those interested, real quick, I'm going to be playing a game called Control. And I'm going to be watching things like The Leftovers. I'm going to be watching The Leftovers. I so, used to love that show. Anything remotely uh, interested in that kind of stuff, please join me, you know, in those times. And uh, I will um, I'll try to get Jay to, because he does Twitter stuff, <laughs> but uh, try to uh, uh, tell people, tell our audience when, um, what time I'm going live or something. Or just tune in throughout the day, whatever. I'll be in and out. Not a big deal. And I would love to. It's a way to not just during the holidays and during the hiatus, but throughout the rest of SOS lifespan. I really want to. I really have had this hankering for a while now, before even the SOS, of trying to do something like this. And it's increased ever more 
now that we have an audience listening to me and you, Jay, yeah. doing all these things that we're passionate about. And they're passionate, too, because they're listening to us every time. And uh, I want to connect with them in different ways and in fun ways, entertaining ways. And I feel that this uh, this whole Twitch thing is a great avenue, a great tool to do so. And if people are willing, of course, people just want to chill out, not say anything, just watch me play and fuck up in a game. Please, all the more. It's fine yeah. with me. I think it's I think it's great. I think it's a great way to to continue, mm -hmm. uh, you know, keeping in touch with our fans. Yes. I love it. I love it. So thank you for opening up your online life to our listeners. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, all right. With with that news out of the way, listeners, you know the drill. Easiest way to contact us is through our website, chicagoghostpodcast.com. From chicagoghostpodcast.com, you can get to all of our social accounts, including Twitter, what Oscar was just talking about. Patreon, of course, could get there right from our website or click on the link uh, in the show notes and it'll take you right to our Patreon page. Um, with that, Oscar, I say we take a break. People already know the phone number. Uh, I'm so glad you didn't mention 872 it. 872-529-0707. You don't have a fucking phone number. You don't have a fucking phone number. It's not a fucking phone number. If you type those numbers in, you instantly put a virus into your fucking cell phone. Instantly. In fucking Stanley. Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. <laughs> so that. Listeners, welcome back to the show. Well, the lights are turned down low, the ceremonial candle is lit, and the drinks are flowing. Let's start this show. On May 31st, 2014, Morgan Geyser and Anissa Weir convinced their best friend, Peyton Lutner, to play a game of hide-and-seek in a section of woods near their home called David's Park in Waukesha, Wisconsin. The night before, the three girls had a sleepover at Morgan Geyser's house to celebrate Morgan's 12th birthday. The next morning, when Peyton Lutner agreed to follow her friends into the woods, she had absolutely no idea what fate awaited her. There wasn't going to be a game of hide-and-seek. Instead, for months, Morgan and Anissa had planned to murder their friend, and they decided that the morning of May 31st, 2014, was the day they were going to finally do it. Hmm. Now, keep in mind, when news of this story broke, it was sensational, and it drew international attention, partly because of the girls' ages. All three girls in this story are only 12 years old, Morgan just barely, and partly because of its viciousness. But the main reason why this story was so sensational was the reason why the crime was committed. And make no mistake about it, just because the perpetrators were young, this crime is simply horrific in its planning and brutality. And the motive behind what I'm about to describe is maybe even worse. So once the, girl, the girls had Peyton isolated, their first plan was to lure Peyton into an outhouse-like building. You know, one of those nasty public bathrooms situated near parks and playgrounds. Mm, yeah, yeah they oh, were gonna, stops, kind of like that. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. They were going to lure Peyton into one of those bathrooms near David's Park, duct tape her mouth shut, lay her on the floor, and then stab her to death. Because, the girl said, there was a drain on the floor where the blood could go. These are 12 years old. Right? But, yeah, you know, it kind of sounds like the, sorry, I know where it's going. But it kind of sounds like the premise to that Sandra Bullock movie, Murder by Numbers. A little bit. Not like a lot. A little bit. They're high school age in that movie. Oh, okay. About these two, these two kids who've been planning to murder someone. They finally pick on someone from school. It was someone they kind of hate, obviously. But it's because they want to murder. And they've always been wanting to murder someone. So they kind of plan it out. And Sandra Bullock plays a cop. It's, it becomes stupid after that. But it kind of reminds me of that general, like, weird children. Why are they trying to do this? Insanely evil, amoral right. thing, right? Right, exactly. A bit. Yeah. So they were gonna first. They were gonna do the deed to Peyton in this this outhouse, this this bathroom off of a park. 
But once they got into the dingy bathroom, Anissa told Morgan she couldn't do it. Instead, Anissa pointed off in the distance to a thick of woods and suggested they kill Peyton there. Peyton was led into the thick, and after tackling Peyton to the ground twice, Anissa and Morgan took turns stabbing Peyton 19 times with a five-inch steak knife, five times in her arm, seven times in her leg, and seven times in her chest and abdomen. The wounds to Peyton's arms and legs were more or less superficial, but the wounds to her chest and abdomen were nearly fatal. Doctors found that one knife wound nearly penetrated the poor girl's heart, missing a major artery by less than a millimeter, the width of a single piece of human hair. Doctors also found that the knife had penetrated Peyton's diaphragm and cut into her liver and her stomach. This is an innocent 12-year-old girl we're talking about, my daughter's age, for Christ's sake. Now, after the horrible deed was done and thinking Peyton was either dead or nearly dead, Morgan and Anissa ran off deep into the woods in search of the one who ordered the sacrifice of an innocent 12-year-old girl. The girls ran off looking for the Slender Man, an impossibly tall, faceless, tentacle-armed, tuxedoed being that abducts and murders children because, according to Morgan Geyser, Slender Man was going to kill her, their families if Morgan and Anissa didn't kill Peyton first, like, mm. a, sacrifi- like a sacrificial offering. Now, I have a clip of Anissa Weir describing Slenderman during a police interview. Oh. Oscar, could we roll that clip really quick? Definitely. Um, there's this website called um, the Creepy Pasta Wiki. Okay. It's full of like horror stories that are meant to purposely scare you. And there's one of them called Slenderman. Who's Slenderman? He's, um, he's uh, this tall, faceless man who preys on children. At his own will, he can, um, like, exploit these tendrils from his back and, uh, like, strangle his victim. For Will the Creepypasta, when he said he targets children most. Anissa. Just crazy. Both girls actually believed that Slenderman was real. Yeah. Now, miraculously, this story has somewhat of a happy ending. After Morgan and Anissa ran off to find Slenderman, Peyton, bleeding from 19 separate knife wounds, somehow mustered the strength and managed to walk herself into a less dense area of woods, where a bicyclist named Greg Steinberg found her completely by chance. When Steinberg approached Peyton, she said to him in a voice weakened by shock and blood loss, quote, could you help me? Please, I've been stabbed multiple times, end quote. Oh, my God. Steinberg immediately called 911, and soon after, emergency responders arrived on scene, and ultimately, Peyton's life was saved. Now, Oscar, I have another clip. It's the actual call Steinberg made to Waukesha 911. I think it's over four minutes long, but I'd like you to play it. Could you cue that up? Let's do it. 911. What's the address? Your emergency. Walks to County Linnium. Transfer over a caller on Big Bend. At the dead end, just south of Rivera. Okay. He came upon a 12-year-old female. She appears to be stabbed. She appears to be what? Stabbed. Stabbed? Correct. Okay. Sir, you still there? Yes. Hi, sir. So, is are you with this 12-year-old female? Yeah. She says she's having trouble breathing. She said she was stabbed multiple times. Stabbed multiple times? Yes. Okay, sir, are you with her right now? Yes. Is she awake? She's awake. Is she Um, breathing? Yeah, she's breathing. She said she can take shallow breaths. She's alert. Okay, stay with her. We're sending the police department. Don't hang up, okay? Uh, okay. Hold on just a minute. Don't hang up. Okay. Okay. Hold on just a minute, sir. We're sending officers. Is there any assailant around? Ah, I didn't even look. I don't see anybody. Okay, stay stay right with her, sir. Is she on the ground or is she standing up? No, she's laying on the grass. Laying on the grass. Stay right with her. Just let me know if she is remaining conscious or not, okay? Okay. Is there any bleeding going on? Her clothing has got blood on it. Where are the wounds? Do you see where the wounds are? No, I'm, I don't know if I should be rolling her over and checking or not. 
Do you know where? Okay, just stay with her and just let me know if she's conscious or alert or stops breathing or anything. Hold on a minute. I'm bothering you at all? My shade? Okay. You're very strong. Two copies. Okay. Just keep her in that position. Just let me know on her breathing. Okay. Your eyes are What's your name, me? sir? My name? Your name. My name, Greg Steinberg. Greg. Okay, were you just passing through? Yes. Okay, and you found her and she was just laying there? Yes. Okay. Okay, so you see any active bleeding or blood spurting out or anything like that? No, unless it's underneath or I just see okay. just dried blood. Okay, just dried blood. Okay. Okay, is she still breathing? Is she still alert? Yeah. Okay, stay with her. Yep. Stay uh, with her. I, and keep an eye on her. Hold on just a minute. Do not hang up, sir. Okay, I will not. Somebody will help you. Who did that to you? Why don't you want to talk? Okay, well, you could better not to talk and don't talk with your energy. And she didn't say who did this or how it happened? I don't know if, I don't know if she wants to be talking. I started to ask okay. her and then... That's okay. If she's... If she's trying to save her energy, I think. Okay, but you see nobody else around you. Are you clearly visible when they pull down that road towards the dead end that they'll see you? I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't are you, hear you. Are you clearly visible when they come down there so they see you? I'm going to have... I've got a gold flashlight on my bicycle. I'll shine that towards any emergency vehicle I see. And I'll be, I mean, I'll be standing in the middle of the road. You're in the middle of the road? And where is she? In the side of the road? Yeah, she's on the grass. It's a oh, little a okay. little trail I take on my bicycle. Okay. Okay, see. So don't hang up, sir. Just stay right with me. Okay. And let me know immediately if you see anything else suspicious in the area, a car, a person, anything. All right. Keep your eyes open. <clears throat> Was there anyone coming or leaving or any cars coming or leaving when you came upon her? Um, no. Nothing? No. So were you on foot walking by or did you pull up in a car? Bicycle. You're on a bicycle? Yeah. How did you see her? Did you just... She's right in the middle of the little path I take. Middle of the little path. Okay. Yeah. It's, there's a squad car coming now. Okay. The squad car coming? Okay. So yeah. the squad car down. Protect her. Here he's coming. Does she have a bike or anything with her? No, I don't see it. One sandal is off. <clears throat> But, you know, maybe three feet away from her. Okay, flag that officer down. I'm going to let you go. Okay, you meet with him right now, okay? Okay, thank thank you. you. You know, both Greg Steinberg and the 911 dispatcher's level of calm in the face of such horror is just amazing, especially on Steinberg's part, having found Peyton. Right, yeah, it's one thing to, like, get the phone call on the other end of that, but being there, right, seeing it, discovering it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, got to admire that. How would you act? Do you not? Oh, man. I don't know, right? How, I, guess I think I would know. definitely be more freaked out than Steinberg sounded. I think yeah. I would be partial, pretty much panicking, I think. Panicking? You know? yeah. I, I think so. I think yeah. so. I'd like to say I think I would be as calm as Steinberg, but discovering a scene like that, uh, especially being a father, oh, man, I, I don't know. I wouldn't <laughs> handle it well. Yeah. No, I Makes sense. But if you think about it, if, if Steinberg hadn't been out riding his bike that day, Peyton wouldn't have made it. Now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right? you're right. I, I mean, yeah. it's just yeah, that makes sense. sheer stroke of luck that he happened to be going down that path at that time. Mm-hmm. Now, about five hours later, Morgan and Anissa were picked up by Waukesha police while they were near an on-ramp on I-94 near Steinhoffel's furniture store in Waukesha, Wisconsin. And if you're from Wisconsin, you know where this is. Steinhoffels is kind of a landmark for Wisconsinites. Anyway, when they were apprehended, Morgan and Anissa told police that they were searching for Slenderman's castle in the woods, that they were going there to live with them. That's what they told police. Hmm. The girls were taken into custody and questioned without their parents present. In Wisconsin, it's legal <sighs> for police to question. Oh, really? Yes. It's legal for police to question children without parents being present. As Wisconsin feels, children will be be more truthful if their mom and dad aren't in the room when they're being questioned. So that just is what it is. People might not like it, but that's what it is in Wisconsin. Right. Especially at the time of uh, this whole thing was happening. Uh, What do you uh, I mean, maybe it's too early to ask kind of question as to like how much um, 
do you believe these girls are these people these little people are little people children <laughs> little people Fucking christ i can't think of the word children for a minute um <laughs> it's late it's okay I'm, I'm, right no no there's no excuse it's it's like early for me right now so anyway um how much uh are you do you think it's bullshit no not not that the Asunder man exists or not i'm saying what they believe no i don't uh, think it's bullshit at all you think they they genuinely believe this? Yes. Think it, yeah. Yes, I do. As opposed to like some sort of premeditated defense, um, you know, acting on their age. Although that does seem like the the workings of a more mature sociopath than it is a, a child. Yeah. But um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just asking. Yeah. No, I I believe they believed that this this had to happen. Mm-hmm. This had yeah. to happen for Slenderman. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, the internet has. Definitely knows no bounds as far as age. There's no age restrictions for the amount of things that the internet will make you believe. I mean, like that pizza gate guy, right? Right. Full yeah. adult. He was a full adult, that guy. Good point. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Now I'm gonna flash forward here a little bit to save you all the boring legal details, but for a time, and we're talking a few years, it was battled out in court whether or not Morgan and Anissa were competent. Competent at the time of the attack and competent enough to understand the charges being brought against them. And it was being argued whether or not they should be tried in juvenile court or adult court. And how they were tried was a big deal. If they, in fact, were tried as juveniles, if found guilty, the girls would serve at most two years in juvenile prison and then be subject to intense community supervision until age 18. Two years in supervision for nearly stabbing Peyton to death What a slap in the face to Peyton and her parents that would have been, right? A number of psychological evaluations were performed on both girls, and it was discovered that Morgan had a history of schizophrenia in her family. And during this time, Morgan herself was diagnosed with early onset schizophrenia. I was about to ask you, isn't that usually like come on at an older older age? No. Unfortunately, not. No, is it more? Is it as common to come it, out in that age as it is any any age? Yes, it could oh. happen. It could happen as a child. It could happen as an adult. Okay, so it's, it's not scary. like Alzheimer's, where it's kind of specific to an age group, and if you get it early, it's kind of rare. Versus Correct. this, where it can be any age. It, it can. Yes. Oh wow! Okay. I don't know the ratio of. of I guess who that's can, a little scarier than it. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the ratio of children being right. diagnosed with early onset schizophrenia versus adults, but well, I it's think not it's, uncommon. I, I think just because uh, people live longer than they are children, there's probably way less child children being right schizophrenic than there are adults because there are way more diagnosed. A lifespan, maybe. A lifespan yeah. has more of an adult to it. Yeah, I mean, and think about it I mean. too. If yeah. a child is talking to an imaginary friend, you're like, "Ooh, that's maybe a little." cute and creepy oh, at I the see. same time. I see. But yeah. if an adult is talking to an imaginary friend, wait a minute, there's something wrong with this motherfucker. You know what I'm Get saying? Get the white coats. Right. Get the white coats. Exactly. Right. Now, ultimately, it was decided that both girls were competent and that they would be tried as adults. Morgan Geyser and Anissa Weir both entered pleas of not guilty by reason of mental disease, which is basically saying that at the time of the crime, a mental disease or defect prevented the girls from appreciating the wrongfulness of their actions or from conforming their conduct in accordance with the law. Is this like a long way of saying they're blaming schizophrenia? They're, they're blaming mental problems. Yeah. 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 In this case, because yeah. disease implies like, yeah. I don't know. And that, that know. was, that was <laughs> the terminology they used. You what know, an interesting mental disease. The way we write and the in, laws is very strange. Yeah, well, Sometimes. legalese, right? Right. Um, in Morgan's case, yes, early onset schizophrenia, right? Mm-hmm. Now, Anissa pled guilty to attempted second degree homicide as a party to the crime with the use of a deadly weapon. And her trial in adult court was based solely on whether or not she was competent at the time of Peyton's stabbing. Peyton's stabbing. A jury decided that Anissa was not guilty of the crime that she was suffering from a mental disorder when the crime took place, and therefore she didn't know that what she was doing was wrong. Essentially, it was decided that Anissa was experiencing a shared delusional disorder with Morgan, that the Slender Man was real, and that the murder needed to happen to appease him. The judge decided that Anissa should be remanded to Winnebago Mental Health Institute in Oshkosh, Wisconsin for 25 years. 
and that she could be eligible for release under community supervision after just three years. And believe it or not, Morgan was also found not guilty because the jury agreed that she too was suffering from a mental disorder at the time of the attack, undiagnosed schizophrenia, and therefore did not know that what she was doing was wrong. So instead of going to prison, Morgan was sentenced to 40 years at a Wisconsin mental health facility that deals specifically with schizophrenics. And that's where she sits today, hopefully getting the treatment she so badly needs. Now, I couldn't find what facility Morgan's currently in, but does it really matter? Anissa Weir, on the other hand, as of the time of this recording, has passed the three-year mark at Winnebago Mental Health Institute, and she has begun petitioning the court to be released under supervision. As of November 23rd, 2020, Anissa's petition has not been answered. So time will tell if Anissa is sent home decades earlier than she should be. Now the victim, Peyton Lutner, is 18 years old now, and I could only find one news story where Peyton spoke about what happened to her that fateful morning, in May 2014. It was an article that described a 2020 interview Peyton did in 2019 when she was 17 years old, the only interview she's ever done. At the time of the 2020 story, Peyton was a senior in high school, and she was planning on heading off to college that this year, 2020, to pursue a medical... staying at home, I'm sorry. (laughs) Right. No, she's going off to college to pursue a medical career, in fact, inspired in part by what happened to her. Peyton said she has grown to accept her scars, all 19 of them. Correction. Actually, I think there were 25 scars in total after surgery was done. Mm -hmm. And when asked what she would say to Morgan Geyser if she had the chance, Peyton responded, quote, I would probably initially thank her. I would say, just because of what she did, I have the life I have now. I really, really like it, and I have a plan. I didn't have a plan when I was 12, and now I do because of everything that I went through, end quote. This girl is tougher than nails, man, I tell you. Now, be sure to check the show notes as I left photos of all three girls if you'd like to put faces to this terrible story. Okay, so a lot can be talked about with what came to be known as the Slenderman stabbing case, Mm -hmm. whether it's childhood schizophrenia, the rare instance of a shared delusion, juvenile actions versus adult actions, mental competency, how children are interrogated, lots of factors in this case, and agree with how the case turned out or not, at the root of the Slender Man stabbing is this idea that something born on the internet, a mame, essentially, was powerful enough to reach out into this world and touch the brewing, the brewing storm that was Morgan and Anissa and influence them. Now, I'm sure that everyone listening to this episode knows who the Slender Man is. And in case you don't, I've left pictures of this creature in the show notes. Go check it out. And when you look at the photos, he really is scary looking. Many similarities to my Mr. Lincoln, actually. Impossible, impossibly tall, long mm-hmm. arms, dark clothing, no face. Just take off the hat that my Mr. Lincoln wears, and he could be the Slender Man. And actually, some people believe that Slender Man is a cousin, if you will, to the Hat Man, which I think my Mr. Lincoln just might be. And then, which in that episode, uh, was it a main feed episode? No, and I was just going to say, listeners, join our Patreon and check out an right. episode called The Hat Man for more information on that topic. Right. I, I mentioned that it was like a, a shadow people, part of like a race yes. of like, uh, to put it lightly, interdimensional aliens um, Ooh, that yeah. uh, visit our Earth in, in some form or another. And they sometimes appear to us. Yes. Or they appear as omens or uh, or a lot of different things. A lot of this. this Harbingers. Lot of yeah. Harbingers, right. Um, and that um, this could be part of the shadow people, right? Right, right. Yeah, that, I remember that Native American interview. Remember um, that was that episode, right? Yes, it was. Yeah, uh, I want to. I want to. I want to mention something about these girls. Uh, what was the? Uh, oh, I forget, I forget everyone's names. I don't know Peyton's uh, victim. Morgan um, Geyser and Anissa Weir, or Morgan, some people pronounce yeah. it Anissa Weir. Got it. Morgan and Anissa. Geyser. Yeah, Morgan and Anissa. Yes. Yeah, so oh, yeah, Peyton. Was... Peyton was the victim. Right. Uh, what, how, how do you feel personally about the, uh, of charging a 12 year old 
Oh, they were 12 years old, right? Um, yes. Uh, to uh, adult prison, uh, adulting, right? Uh, uh, charge them as an adult versus um, juvenile. Juvenile or, or treatment facility, right? So I'm going to use Peyton Lautner's own quote. I'm, I'm paraphrase here, but she said, mm-hmm. commit an adult crime, be tried as an adult. You know, she mm-hmm. said, if they had stolen a candy bar, I could understand not trying them in adult court. They didn't steal a candy bar. They almost took her life. Commit an adult crime, be tried as an adult. Okay. That's how you feel about it. I, I do. 100%. Okay. Yes. That, I'm that's excited. me. That's my opinion. Well, no, no, yeah. Totally. I'm not saying no. Uh, I do feel the opposite only because uh, I don't think a 12 year old knows what the fuck is going on about anything, given a healthy 12 year old, much less an unbalanced. Uh, uh, who knows what if it's if it's not chemical imbalance slash schizophrenia problems or if it's like um you know and you know just what we see as not even barely any you know guidance from the internet for them complete belief in something they read online or they saw a video on, or whatever again i did not grow up with the internet guys um th- yeah I, I i definitely think they need help a 12 year old i don't think should ever I mean, that's insane to me because they don't know anybody. They don't know anything. I'm not saying they don't know anything, but they don't know anything, you know? They don't, um, but they think they do. Well, they, that's why. That's how everyone is, right? Especially when yeah. you're young. You can't wait to grow up, right? Um, and then when you grow up, you just want to go the fuck back. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> oh, what I wouldn't do. Right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll anyway, sit around so. and play that game you talked about, control all day long. Control all day long, right, all day long. Gets Craig, mom, make me a case of Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. It's just an, it's an interesting, almost a political thing. I'm not gonna obviously get into it like that, but it makes me think about just the way we kind of see crime versus like all the context around the crime. You know, like you hear a story: this girl got stabbed by this other girl, or you even say female got stabbed by this other female instantly okay that female should go to jail for it and then you get more details they're little girls more details they were influenced by god knows what slash chemical like i feel like there's there's definitely not a grounds where i can see jail time because this girl's family is going to feel like shit like that's they only cares about the little girl surviving it thank god she did right peyton surviving it so like i you know i don't know how much stuck i don't get i don't know it's very strange. It's it's definitely problematic. I'm just having trouble with it. But yep. like, and and I'm I guarantee you, half of our listeners, if not more, probably agree with you. You know, yeah. yeah. I'm just of the mindset: do the yeah, crime, right. right? And do the time, right? I can't wait to steal a candy bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get I get a slap yeah. on the wrist. Yeah, I mean, Peyton was she was really clear on how she felt about it. Right, for sure. Well, I mean, definitely, I definitely don't blame her for feeling that way, but I. Everyone else is what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry. Continue. No, it's okay. So, so where did this idea of Slender Man come from? What, what's his genesis? What's his story? Right. So, in case you don't know, Slender Man was born from the mind of Eric Kunsen. That's K N U D S E N. Kunsen. How, how would you say it? Knudsen. Knudsen. All right. Maybe. He is now Eric Knudsen. It's like tsunami, right? Or the word knowledge. Right? I it's said K-N. Kunsen, Knudsen. Sure. Yeah, whatever. So Slender Man was born from the mind of Eric Knudsen, known online as Victor Surge, <laughs> when he submitted his entry to a web form called Something Awful in June 2009. Now, Something Awful was running a contest to see which of its users could submit the best idea for a new modern myth with which to, to scare people, to frighten people. Knudsen, our Victor Serge, submitted two doctored black and white photographs, supposedly taken in the mid-1980s, showing groups of children and a strange being lurking off in the background, observing the children. This being is Slender Man. The story attached to the pictures claimed that the children in the photographs, along with the photographer, disappeared shortly after the photos were taken, never to be seen again, mm. implying that the being captured in the photos, Slender Man, had done something to him. Now, I've left links to these two original Slender Man photos in the show notes. In the first link, which I've named Original Slender Man Pick 1, 
the caption that how did you say his last name, Oscar? Slenderman. No, the Kunzen. Oh, Knudsen. Knudsen. God, I gotta remember that. I like Knudsen. In the caption that Knudsen submitted to accompany the photo, uh, it read, this is a quote, we didn't want to go. We didn't want to kill them. But it's persistent silence and outstretched arms horrified and comforted us at the same time. 1983, photographer unknown, presumed dead, end quote. Now, that's a cool that's a cool lore though. When I mean, you think about creating one, right? It is. And and in these stories that Nudsen, I remembered, uh, originally submitted were purposely vague, mysterious, and creepy mm-hmm. all at the same time. He did that yeah, on yeah. purpose. Yeah, it, it works right? really well that way. Like that's a he's a good storyteller. He's a good storyteller. Yes, absolutely. Now, the kids in this first photo look really frightened or agitated, and the predominant kid the one whose face is right up in yours, the seething anger and hatred in this kid's face is palpable, almost like he's being influenced by Slender Man standing behind him. It's an incredibly effective photograph. Now, I tried really hard to find out who this kid is, this kid that's right in your face. I mean, huh. this photo went viral. You'd think someone would have named him by now, but right. no. No name recognition software good enough to... Uh... <laughs> I Find guess that, not. Huh? Yeah, this kid, hes he isn't named anywhere, which fuels the mystery. It's kind of haunting, actually. But you know what? The kid reminds me of a, a young Glenn Danzig. Yeah! Uh, I'm going to have to see his face. Give me a second while you talk. <laughs> Listeners, check it out. That was my Glenn Danzig impression, by the way. Listeners, check it out. Uh, the second link I left, I called Original Slenderman Pick oh, 2. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay, so you're looking at it right now? Yes, I am. You see that kid who's right in front of your face? No, I, I don't have the picture on me, but I, oh. I, his face is so particular, though. I can only imagine. Oh, Glenn Danzig. I see what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, I don't have the picture that, on that, me. For some reason, the that's show, The show notes haven't been created yet, Jake. Oh, no, I thought you were going to Google it right away. Oh, no, um, I didn't. You could Google, like, original Slenderman pick, and it'll, uh, okay. it'll pull it, it right up. Oh. Yeah, for I don't know why. That's what he reminds me of, and... Uh, so now the second link I left to a picture, the original picture called Original Slender Man Pick 2, its caption read, quote, one of two recovered photographs from the Sterling City Library blaze, notable for being taken the day which 14 children vanished and for what is referred to as the Slender Man. Deformities cited as film defects by officials. Fire at library occurred one week later. Actual photograph confiscated as evidence. 1986, photographer Mary Thomas, missing since June 13th, 1986, end quote. Now, of course, the Sterling City Library blaze never happened. It was just a story. But with these two photos and their purposely vague and mysterious captions, they let loose the floodgates on the Slenderman myth. Soon, other users on Something Awful began updating and uploading their own doctored photos of Slenderman, along with new pieces of the Slenderman mythos. Knudsen effectively lost control of his creation, and the internet took over. With, with this, Slenderman jumped off of Something Awful and made it onto 4chan and Creepypasta, like you heard Anissa Weir talk about in the clip we played. Slenderman evolved into a predator of human children that could control the human mind. Tentacle-like appendages were added to his back. He became, a, he became a being with constant malice that lived in the woods. And probably most significant to the Slenderman stabbing case we just talked about, a facet was added to the Slenderman story, which said that a human could be a proxy for Slenderman. In other words, a human who serves Slenderman, either drawing victims to the creature's lair or killing and hunting on behalf of Slenderman. Now, in fact, Anissa Weir told police that she learned about becoming Slenderman's proxy on the Creepypasta website. And that's what she and Morgan were out to accomplish by killing Peyton Lautner, become his proxy. And his lair in the woods is where they were headed to after the attack when the police caught him. This all played right into what happened in real life. Slenderman has crept into video games. The Enderman in Minecraft is said to be based off of Slenderman. He's all over YouTube.
countless websites. There's a great documentary called Beware the Slender Man about the stabbing case, actually. I highly recommend it. Check it out. And there's even a terrible 2018 Hollywood movie called Slender Man, which has <laughs> terrible. It has a whopping 8% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow, that's really bad. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's so bad. You could do better with your eyes closed, Jay. Like, oh, I don't. Damn. Um, yeah, real quick, though, doesn't this sucked. remind you of a lot of other examples of similar type things happening, except that they, that those, these examples I'm about to give, I guess, the, the other examples from before, is that the, what they didn't have is really the internet, but also more important than that, they didn't have um, a vagueness to it. And that's uh, the Blair Witch Project. How Love many people believe the marketing in that movie? I, I believed. Did. I did. I believe the marketing in that movie. In the halls of my high school. Yes, I was in high school in 1999. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> in the halls of my high school, or I think it was freshman, um, we talked about that. We all talked about it confidently as if it was 100% real. These kids are nowhere to be found. This is fucked up. Who's going to be there? We should go to that fucking forest. Shit like that. Yeah. And then you think of um, other tricks employees that people do just like Knudsen did. To, this is, he knew the whole time. It's fictional. He did. Can you imagine if you give him the wherewithal, like, this is what your shit's going to create? Would he still do it? Probably not. Not a sane person, I assume. Um, but who knows? Uh, you think of, uh, you know, actors being told, hey, don't exist for a while so people can believe you're dead in this movie, like Cannibal Holocaust. You know, yeah. make people believe it to the point where the courts believe that they were actually dead. That's you true. Know, and fueled that insanity. Now, obviously, the Internet wasn't around for that one. And the news became a newsworthy story that eventually got expunged and retaliated because, hey, these are the actors. They're fine. Look at them. Um, but Beverage Project, they were at, they were at the same thing. For two years, they were uh, uh, signed a thing to not appear any public appearances for like two years, I think. Oh, for Blair Witch? For Blair Witch Project, wow. and that one did have the internet. My, granted, <laughs> a milder version of the internet, and uh, we just didn't have the the meme the meme factories around to make anything explode yet. But um, it's the same thing. This is just the next one, and it's amazing how a story written in some was it a blog you said or some sort of competition contest, yes. writing contest or whatever, um, just like this little thing, not a big movie, not anything like that. Just a little thing. Yeah. Started this whole forest fire. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it's happening all the time. It's happened all the time. JFK is like that, too, for a lot of reasons that are not true, that the movie's showing you that are to be true. How many people are walking around believing that that movie is 100% true? It's not. You know, and it's uh, it's it's not like, uh, you know, I blame them. You know, they should know more. They should learn to crack a book and read it. But, you know, at the same time, that's a lot of influence going around. It, it, it really is. And that, that's... That's of adults, good. though, this is a twelve. You were talking about twelve-year-olds, but this is adults that are gaining influence too. A lot of these examples. Yes, here. yes, and in in Slenderman's case too. Yes, adults. Yes. Um, yeah, it's it's really amazing the life this thing took on. Uh, nothing that I could think of even compares to the way the Slenderman evolved. You know, the mm-hmm. the most recent one I could think of is Momo. You know, Momo is a blip. Compared to to Slender Man, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Charlie Charlie Challenge is also like a small blip, a blip. Compared. But Slender Man is still going strong, and that's the thing with every new upload and view, for every new piece of content that Slender Man slithers into, his infamy grows, and with that, the chance that more and more people will begin to believe in that he is in fact real, just like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness monster or UFOs to some extent, the more we hear about it, the more likely people will start to believe it. Just look at Morgan and Anissa, right? Do you think it'll become like a, like a skeleton key situation? Uh, Explain. Where if you, if you believe it enough, it'll be true. Funny. You should say that because here's where the problem comes in. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's a school of thought. That says the harder we believe in something, the more likely that something will become real. It's like the power of prayer, right? Power of prayer, sure. But in this this line of thought, it's called a thought form. 
Mm-hmm. According to ancient teachings, during your process of thinking and feeling, a very interesting phenomenon takes place. You create a thought form or a thought entity, a real living being or entity which is created by the process of thinking, and it's made of energy and it contains emotional and mental matter. Thought forms are real in the sense that they become, for a period of time, a kind of independent living being. Kind of like radio waves. You don't see it, but they actually exist. Yeah, and you create them. Like We have the ability to create these things through our power of thought. Mm -hmm. You see, when thinking this way, your thoughts are things. They have tenacity, coherence, life. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're real, and they can act in the physical world. Now, it's said that, in general, thought forms are usually weak, and they have a very short short lifespan. But depending on how clear a person's thought is or how skilled a person is at creating thought forms, a thought form can be very well defined and exhibit either positive or negative traits depending on the thoughts and emotions of the per- of the person. For example, anger creates a negative thought form, and compassion creates a positive thought form. For me, I kind of relate thought forms to the Patronus from Harry Potter. Yeah, oh, that's good. That's good. I love Harry Potter. So what? If Harry focuses hard enough under the right mental state, usually extreme duress in the books and movies, he can summon a beautiful stag, which helps Harry in the real world. This is what a thought form is. Thought forms are kind of like that. Now, a really skilled practitioner of thought form, a person who has achieved mastery of thought form meditative practices. Remember, all this is mental. Done, done through the mind. It's said that these people can create what's called a tulpa or an imaginary companion that achieves full sentience, a real-life imaginary friend born from the mind of what's known as a tulpa mancer, which is, again, a person who has mastered the art of creating thought forms to the point that their thought forms become real. And folks, I'm not making this up. This is supposedly a real thing. And the process of creating beings through concentrated thought has been practiced practiced by Tibetan mystics for centuries. And if you think about it and apply the idea of thought form and the tulpa to, say, Bigfoot or extraterrestrials, if someone is out there concentrating hard enough on finding them, and they do, are they really seeing an honest-to-God Bigfoot or alien? Or are they experiencing their own tulpa? One brought about by the tireless search for their obsession, possibly without the person even realizing they did it. It's really interesting to think about. And so far, we've just been talking about an individual creating a thought form that becomes topa. Then there's something else entirely called the topa effect. The topa effect happens when a large group of people believe in something and think about something with similar traits so much that the thing is willed into existence and then is free to do whatever it wants in our world. Literally, by sheer number of believers, something that was once fake becomes real. And if we take our fictitious Slenderman and we think about how deeply, since 2009, he's become infused in digital media and the internet, how he's crept into people's thoughts and imaginations enough to where someone would want to kill for him, I'd say we best be careful how much time we dedicate to thinking about this thing. 2020 has been worse enough. The last thing we need to deal with is Slender Man. So thought forms, topa, bringing fake into reality based on our sheer will. And imagine the millions of people who know about, maybe not necessarily believe in that Slender Man, but know about him. And in this line of thought, that is enough to bring him into actual existence. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, there's been many examples in fiction that explore this idea. Many examples. Some of them, you know, bypasses all, really. Um, I think in in general purpose terms, I very much think of the way um, the invincible nature of Michael Myers is like that. Is the sheer fear of his existence, the endless pursuit motivation soundless voiceless 
It's uh, he can't be killed because they can't believe they can't kill him. It's like we're creating his own enemy, you know, in that series of movies. Yeah. You think of something more example, more recent is Cabin in the Woods, where the nightmares that are underneath the the the, the that land are night where nightmares come from, but also it's our nightmares. Like it's like who created who in that scenario? Like why are we afraid of killer clowns and why do we dream up of unicorns and Freddy Krueger and all these things? Um, like they're actually jailed down there somewhere, waiting to kill a real human. Um, a lot, lot, lot of stuff like that. This, uh, you know, that game I was telling you about has a little bit of that too. And oh, um, control. Yes, in control, and it's uh, it's very fascinating. And I mean, it's like. It almost has like the the it almost has, has vibes of uh, the secret, which I know sounds hokey as fuck. Uh, for those who may not know, the secret is like this, like an alternate way of living. Like if you believe yes. you're gonna get a Ferrari, you're gonna get a Ferrari, right? Point. Yes. It's like that. It's like they're doing the same thing. Um, now they're making money off the idea of doing the same thing, but uh, it's a similar path. And then you get into quantum physics of it all, right? Like the, but that I I am woefully under. <laughs> That's so above my pay grade. I can't even begin <laughs> to tap into that as much as I would love to. Um, but this is very near science because um, I mentioned earlier, like remote prayer, it is, you know, statistics or reports have shown that it does work. Like not like a hundred percent of the time. It's like 12% people who get remote prayer versus the ones that don't are 12% better. Simple as that. Something like that. Some number I read once. Wow. And it's such an interesting thing that a community of people getting together for one little thing. In this case, like Bermo Perry being like, Oh, hopefully this guy, this person survives his car crash or gets out of the coma or heals his heart or whatever. Uh, it's interesting. And we have like, this is why mysticism or the idea of all this mystical stuff has been coming out more and more over the past, I don't know, generation. Right. Um, you know, like it's, it's seemingly coming out more and more. And I think the more connected we are online, the more people are willing to, and accidentally spark a lot of topos. Wow. Ideally. Right. I mean, so, I'm not saying that Suleiman is out there somewhere. He could be, I'm not saying he's not, I'm yeah, just saying that he very well could be right. Because I really do think there is something to the mind in being able to influence the real world mind over matter. Right. Your, mm-hmm. your mind heals you when you're sick. I, I don't want to be sick and the fever breaks or whatever, whatever example you know, I, of the I mind healing the, the body. Right. I do that all the time though. Yeah. Or, or the, the control you could have over your breathing and your heart rate just by mm. thinking pleasant thoughts. Right? right. It's a, it's a real thing. Uh, and, and to be able to project that outward into the world, I think is absolutely real. So if you have say a million people thinking about this thing, putting their fears, their obsession into this thing, the Slender Man, mm-hmm. fuck, who knows? Maybe he is out there running around somewhere. I don't know. Right. But I think there's something to it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, unfortunately, it's a, it's such a a scatter shot of, a, of an idea. Like, I don't know, like, you don't even know how to begin to research that or really get into the details of how it could be, how what it could be. We'd have to literally experiment with it and Unfortunately, my lab, my laboratory is still in the construction. It's <laughs> yeah. in the construction. I'm not uh, ready to experiment with the Slenderman. I haven't gotten oh, the thanks. rights to uh, all the permits in the, in the correct order. I'm in trying to will for it. It's not, <laughs> it's not <laughs> happening there yet. Go. There you go. You no, know, I need more people to help me with. Uh, help me will in uh, a permit for my laboratory so I can do this experiment better. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like. It's interesting. Yeah. This idea of thought form. And will this be called uh, parapsychology? Will that be in that under that subgenre of psychology, parapsychology? I'm I'm sure. You know, I'm I'm and that twilight zone episode too about the guy who um his neurosis made him feel or made him um uh think that a uh, a wild out of control disease was destroying the population and it was so intense, he was so for the lack of a better term, willful and powerful about the idea that it was becoming true. Wow. The Twilight Zone episode about that, and then uh, spoiler alert to a what fifty year old show. Um, he, you know, they figure out like a no- local nurse or someone figures it out and convinces him, like, "Hey, it's under your head. Don't worry, everything's fine." And he, it ends with like him 
dreaming of something completely different and kind of <laughs> fucked up also because that's how far off he is and he's susceptible to what he believes is true and that's yeah. kind of fucked up you know it is that's why I say, just in case this stuff is true, maybe we should let, lay off Slenderman for a while. Nah, fuck him. We don't need to be dealing with that in 2021. No, no. He has a he has like what a couple weeks left in 2020. Exactly. You still have time to fuck with us, Slenderman. Just only a couple weeks. That's right. Stay in 2020. Right. So I don't know what do you, uh, that. I mean that that is what Slenderman is. Where he started, you know his his creator. Knudsen, what? How does? How, I can't do it. I can't do Knudsen? it. I don't Knudsen. know. I said Knudsen, but I, Knudsen I have no came idea. out and said, "Look, dummies, this is fake. This is not real." People didn't want to listen. They don't want to listen. He's taken down all his stuff, taken down all that original uh, uh, postings he made as as Victor Surge. It's gone. By the way, that's his porn name, right? <laughs> it's it's a cool porn name. Yeah. Uh, he did that after um, the the Peyton stabbing. <laughs> the Peyton Lautner stabbing. He took it all down. Oh, I thought he meant he did porn. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. I totally no, took Nud- out the seriousness of that sentence. And Knudsen I- took down all his, his Slender Man stuff uh, mm-hmm. after the Peyton Lautner uh, stabbing. Didn't want his, yeah. his material associated with it. Uh, but yet people still believe it. They still believe it. That's, that's the kind of life this thing has taken on. It, it's out there forever. There will always right. be Slender Man. <laughs> so, sounds scary, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's um it also feels like this answer, like this uh this this avenue of thinking about, you know, uh, uh, a large enough population creating something out of thin air as as Slender Man itself, the original idea was created out of Knudsen's brain. Um makes you think of uh, like this is could be a tell all answer to a lot of the paranormal supernatural activity that we talk about on the show it's very true right very it almost true. feels like it's a, a dry erase board method. i don't know some i'm trying to think of an analogy but i can't think of it but it almost seems like the answer to a lot of the questions we've risen fascinations and cases and spirituality we've you know tasked you mean um, the idea of thought form in tulpa right yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah you're yeah, right yeah. you're right it can't be a catch-all right it's almost like we have to start off by saying, like, we don't think it's a top bus, so, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, it's kind of like one of those things, like, you, you you listen to a certain episode. I can't think of them now in my head, uh, but I know there's, like, at least five in over the last five years since we've done the show. Um, there, there's, like, there's like watermarks, not the right term. Um, you know, like, journeys, like, or five different stages of uh, realization where, like, I pass a certain stage. We talk about a certain something. I'm like, and that opens up like everything about all the other subjects we've talked about. You know, I can't mm. think of them. And ah, I'm trying to think of something yeah. specific and I can't come. It's not coming to me right now, but uh, it feels like a lot of things are the answer to a lot of other things. Or like there were avenues that we could have discussed in past shows had right. we thought of it earlier. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Things like that. Look, it opens up uh, a new level. Right. Um. This is this may be one of them. It's my point. I don't know how serious I'll take it, mind you, but yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, good, it, it's, it's interesting. Story. Listeners, let us know what you think. Contact. I'm not a fan of Slender Man, but it's an interesting story. It is. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Contact at ChicagoGhostPodcast dot com. And with that, any final words? Nah, man. Let's go. Well, listeners, have a very merry Christmas. Happy holidays, whatever you prefer. Crazy Kwanzaa. Crazy Kwanzaa indeed. And we will catch you with our next scripted, researched episode on February 15th, 2021. Oscar, take us home.
You think? Yeah, you sound good. Ba 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 such a dude. Such a dude. Um, Did you do that, something different or? No, just uh, that we haven't really been checking my checks lately. We just start recording. Oh, yeah, you we know? do, don't we? So it's just I'm, being, I'm trying to be pro. A little pro here. Yeah, no, um, you sound good. You sound just as good, too. Um, cool. I guess, obviously, you know, if there was an issue, we would have mentioned it before. Um, I have one important question about this uh, show. Yes. Is it pronounced uh, Slenderman? Or is it... <laughs> <laughs> like Professor Slenderman or like Slenderman attorney at law? Is that how it uh this week it did? Um, yeah. yeah, because I was thinking, you know, the the Bridgewater Triangle trip, that was like when we first moved into this house and we were already podcasting a good amount prior to that. We've been here four years. Three and a half years. So it's yeah, it's gotta be over four years we've been doing this consistently. I mean, that's pretty good. It would be so pretty weird good. to just not have it to do. Well, I, see, I got to get out of that mindset because there will still be stuff to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, we, uh, relieve some pressure, especially during the holidays where, like, um, you know, since we're Americans, we're predisposed to buy everything mm. um, consumer. Uh, you know, I just think it, I, we can totally sell it is my point. We can sell it. Not a problem. I think people would understand. I think our audience are not, I'm not saying they're all like fickle bitches, but they're not, not overall, not really. And they would understand hardcore fans or not. They would totally understand. It's so weird. I mean, this, this has literally become part of my life. It's, it is 100% part of my life, you know, me too. And just thinking of putting that down for a while, it's, it's, it's a scary thought. It's literally scary to me. I mean, yeah, I have um, I have specific days off that I because of this job, because of the not job, because of this show. Oh wow! Oh yeah, so it's an intricate part to both of our lives. Yeah, I don't know what a Wednesday looks like in my store anymore. <laughs> and they have a apparently they have a especially the guy has a lot in common with me with her, like with the t- taste of games, tastes of shows and movies, oh, cool. and very similar tastes and stuff like that. Um, like, which means that they're trying to like match make me to be friends with them. Um, at least maybe Lexi is or both. I mean, I don't know. I'm like, ah, don't force it. You know, (laughs) you don't have to force it. I'm fine. I have my group of friends already. I don't need it. Yeah. Uh, You know, exactly. Oh, I I will never say no to a friend, but like, you know, but I don't, I'm not uh, taking applications. (laughs) Yeah. Dude, I get it. Preaching the choir on that one. It sounds really rude. I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, whatever. (laughs) Not to me. No, (laughs) right. Which is why you're my friend. Exactly. Right. It's exactly right. Right. Exactly. I don't. I, I have my core group, and I don't need anything else. I'm fine. Not taking. I love it. Not taking applications. Right. And I see, like you know, I hang out all the time. She hung out yesterday. Like she slept over yesterday, for example. Wow. I mean, for me, I enjoyed the. Yeah, I was gonna say you had time. the whole place to yourself. A bed. Yes, five times. I called with my girls all by myself. It was great. <laughs> it was like little my finger. Um. <laughs> I had fun with it, but like it's still like it's coming up a lot, you know. I'm like, all right, I mean, I'm, sh- I'm like, I should be maybe worried, but I'm not that attached. I don't have to be worried. I don't care. I have a place to myself. I love being alone. <laughs> oh God, I envy you. <laughs> it's great. All oh, right, yeah, I guess because I don't, I don't have a because the Kaylee's used to have two other humans to deal with. Three, but, but. Three. what's the third? Katie. No, no, if uh, Kaylee's, I mean. Oh, I'm sorry. Them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I'm oh, like, no, did you I... get some other baby? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, when that happens, I enjoy every moment of it. It might sound terrible, but I'll just yes. sit in the in the front room <laughs> on my chair, no TV, nothing, just quiet. And it <laughs> no is splendid. TV. It is great. Yeah. I'm just glad I can put like a show on or a game on and I don't like what's that? Oh, it's fucking <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't you're not gonna don't. watch it. I'm like, you ain't gonna watch it. Don't you're, worry. You're, you're calling the new friends, making play dates. Yeah, play hey, dates, you want right. Lexi to come over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you can't beat me in fast talking. You cannot beat me in fast talking. I will. I'll fast talk you right over. Uh, That was great. That was you came in. You came in uh, very quick on that one. (laughs) Yes, I did. I was like in fucking Stanley. Uh, uh, Okay, and we did. We didn't get any bing, boom, boom. None of that bullshit. Everything actually on my end. No. No, I see. I don't think it would. Yeah, it probably wouldn't. No, I, I mean, it would. it would real sounds, but if I'm a computer that it sounds, I don't think it would. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. But yeah. mine definitely would. Yeah. That's what happened when we did that uh, pandemic episode. I got like three fucking... Oh, I don't remember. You remember more of that stuff than I do. I really do forget it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you would love this game, by the way. It's hard, though. It's not easy. What was it called again? Control. Control. Mm-hmm. What's it? What's a high level explanation of what it is? Well, I mean, there's so many details. I would love to really have a chat with you about it because you would just love every oh. single aspect about it. You, oh, I don't think there's any element in the game you wouldn't enjoy or find fascinating, or just fucking love. Capital L. It's really? um, it's uh, I don't want to give you the premise, but the well, I do want to give you the premise. Okay, so it's about this girl. You're this girl this whole time. This woman who has this strange ability where she's talking to someone all the time someone's there in the like a presence within her all the time anyway she gets into this building this nondescript federal looking building in new york she goes inside and she realizes this building is like the fbi for the supernatural oh it's called fbc federal bureau of control and what they do and she's discovering as she's going through the hallways you know, through all these desks and whatever. You can imagine a federal building, right? Yeah. Um, she's realizing that um, this building has very strange properties to it. And it's been attacked by some other dimensional force. Hmm. It's been, that makes like every single, everyone there who would be working there, who would be living there or whatever, um, either gone, dead, or turned into some creature that's attacking you. Whoa. And you have to make your way through this whole thing. And essentially, it, com- it it manages to do it every kind. It taps into every single kind of supernatural thing and phenomenon we've ever talked about. Are you serious? Or has ever been presented on film, television, or books. What? I, I, that's, the, that's the best way I can describe something so big. It's the best way I can describe it. Is it for PlayStation? Is it only for PlayStation? No, it's available on the Switch as, as well, and I think in the Xbox. Really? Um, it, I think so, but I don't know if it's uh, if you need to have some sort of Xbox specific thing. I'm not sure. I, I don't know how Xbox works. I know that I have seen it somewhere on Xbox. Oh, it sounds it's, awesome. It is so cool. I can't. I, I can't even. For example, there's a department of dimensional research. There's a department of luck and probability. There's a uh-huh. department of like. There's so many things that they study. And that they do. They talked about items that become uh, altered items that have been touched by other dimensions and therefore are like a plague to whoever touches them or Holy sees them. Shit. It's very interesting stuff. There's um, so many things, so many different, so many different worlds within the world. You go into a little office and you become suddenly in a different world the size of a planet inside of a building in New York the whole time. It's such an interesting concept, a string of concepts. It's so cool. 